they're installing today is just a basic system which will run off solar for these guys who don't have electricity and it will provide them with lights and um, they can charge their phones and then uh, they can grow the system from there because the, the big feature with the PICO system is that you can actually add on and a small system can grow organically into a larger system over time. So you're not limited and you don't need to replace a small system with a big system. You can actually grow the small system into a big system. What they're receiving here is a, is a 48 amp hour battery which can uh, run a large screen TV for, I guess, four hours. And then there's also an inverter so they can run some legacy AC appliances like televisions and uh, potentially charge from the grid but there's no grid power here. Uh, we put in an LED light as well so that in the evening you can just put on your light. There's also these plugs here and we're getting you an extension cord so that if you want to plug in your radio you can plug in your radio. I wrote a piece with uh, Professor Velodia, the Pro Vice Chancellor. After Cape Town said they would buy power back um, from people who had excess power, we wrote a piece that said that's fine, let the middle class and the corporate sell it back. What about the people at this end of the market who have nothing, um, who don't have power, who are not on the grid, and who if you gave people like people in this situation, if you gave them solar power, um, it, it's a virtuous circle in the sense that it transforms their lives immediately. There's light, there's, uh, I can run a TV, I can run a small cooker, I can run a fridge. From a health perspective, if your insulin can be kept in a fridge, you know, if you're a diabetic, you know, it changes things profoundly. If, if informal settlements are able to generate excess power and you bought it in the same way as you're offering to buy it from middle class people, here you're not losing any revenue. There's a big complaint at the local government, if you go solar, we lose a key part of revenue. Not here, no one's paying for electricity. So you're not losing anything. You don't have to electrify the informal, you just have to put solar in everywhere. People here will then harvest sunlight and you will give them cash in return. So you're transforming lives not just by the solar but by giving people sustainable incomes because the sun's not going to disappear. In the, in the long term we would hope that as households here are able to earn more and more, if you put two or three panels up and so on, your need for social grants begins to diminish. It, it, so government saves money, local government saves by not having to electrify, and everyone here can get sustainable incomes without having to get jobs. I mean, I don't see it as a risk. I, I see it as just facts of life. I think there's, there's an automatic tendency to judge people because of where they live as to their moral character. I don't make that judgment at all. Um, so yes, it may get stolen. People may sell it. But that's part of life and we have to pilot for that. I'm very happy just because uh, I'm going to start uh, charging my phone, like getting the lights. So I'm no more using a candle. Yes, uh, I'm no more knocking at someone's door asking to charge my phone. 